What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and today we are back in this 1930 Model A Roadster. We're gonna get a bunch of work done on it in this episode and I'm really excited to get back into it. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's get into it. All right, so the 1930 Model A Roadster, what are we gonna do, what are, where are we at, what's going on with this thing? So what's the last thing we did? We made this hood for it and we made this body line, this cool little, we made some tooling to make that. So um, you can check back in the videos if you're interested in how to make that. And uh, we went over a little bit of how to make this hood. The inside's all been done. This is all custom made interior bracing. Um, really kind of going for the details on this car, all this Floor pan has all been handmade. The interior structure back here as well. This rumble seat, floor pan on the bottom. Um, gas tank mounts. It's all kind of that drilled hole look um, that I personally really love. I also made this back piece here. Um, did the bead roll in it. Also made this, this uh, I don't know what you'd call that, but that, that rear body structure. Kind of tried to make it a little extra special, you know? So in this episode, I'm gonna start on the nose of this car. Now it has a 32 grill shell and it's, you know, they're a great classic grill, love them. Um, but we're gonna go something a little bit different. So we're gonna try and customize this grill shell to be a split grill shell that has kind of a little bit of a Zephyr inspired look. Why? Because I love Zephyrs and because I like the look of split. The other thing that this is getting is a split front windshield. This is a Duval cast bronze windshield these are extremely beautiful very classic hot rod windshield it's been around for a very long time fun fact these have been cast in vancouver bc also the socal speed shop window um i believe has been also cast in vancouver for a very long time so if you guys want one of these these have actually been out of production for a while socal speed shop um and wicked customs um, they, they actually make and sell these um, in the lower mainland where I'm at now. So these are available. So if you, uh, if you want one, SoCal Speed Shop, um, Canada or US, you can order one. They're, uh, anyway, that's why I'm trying to do this split thing. I love the split window on this, and I would love to split the grill to match. I think it'd look pretty cool. So that's what this episode's going to be about. We're going to start to design the split nose for this. We're gonna to start to make a wire pattern for the split. And what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna split this grill. Like I'm gonna use this nice aftermarket grill and I'm gonna figure out how to split it and fit it into two halves. It's gonna be a bunch of custom fabricating to make this happen, but I think it'll be worth it. So hopefully you're excited as I am. Let's start working on this thing. I think I'm gonna take this grill insert out and, uh, or maybe even just leave it in and start kind of eyeballing the shapes that I'd want to make out of this. And then we're gonna make a wire form to fit our sheet metal to and, uh, and customize this grill. So I'm excited, let's do it.
All right, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell because it's just a piece of paper, but that's kind of what I'm trying to go for is uh, is trying to get that that split shape to look right. And to be honest, it's going to be really tough for me to decide on that shape because one, I'm very indecisive, but two is this windshield isn't on here. So I think the smart thing to do right now before I decide on this shape, although this shape is modeled loosely off of, you know, the taper and peak in this, you know, I'm trying to do that, but kind of upside down here. And it also kind of works with, uh, you know, the nose of the Zephyr-ish. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out my design cues, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put this windshield on so that I get a uh, better idea of what it looks like together. Now, the way I think I'm going to do that um, is I'm probably going to just take all these studs out and then I'll use some template paper, much like the stuff I use to make the nose, and, uh, and I'll lay it on here and locate all these holes and then trim it to the outside of this. And then what I'll probably end up doing is taping it to this with no studs in it, fitting it onto the cowl of the car, and then marking out where it is, tracing where it is, and then just taking the template off and putting the template on the car without the windshield so that I can mark the holes themselves. That's what I think I'm gonna do. Get the windshield on, have a look at this again, see what I'm thinking, because there's multiple ways of doing this as well. We'll get into it, but um, you know, you could have the grill stay as a whole and push in from the backside and then not see this surrounding chrome. It'd be kind of like a more of a phantom looking grill. I don't know, I'm, I'm considering, I'm considering things. Uh, anyway, that's next. Let's get this windshield on the car.
All right, so I did stick the window on there. Now with a window like this, all these windows, this is what this video is gonna be about now, is fitting the window because believe it or not, all cowls were not created equal and all windows were not created equal. So the beauty about this, he leaves a bit of extra meat here, you know? There's a little bit of extra meat to be ground to fit this window better. So it's not something that's gonna just sit on there and fit perfect. You have to fit this window, okay? So what I'm gonna do now, and, and I'm kind of abandoning the split grill for this video because I think this is more important and we're gonna do this first because once this is on here, we don't have any clamps or anything, we'll really be able to kind of eyeball how cool the grill will look. Um, you know, and, and make sure that we're giving it the right lines. Um, anyway, <coughs> pardon me, anyway. So what I'm gonna do now is try and get rid of the gaps that I've got in the, or between the sheet metal and this. So one thing that can happen because this cowl is tapered up is I can move this window back it will end up lifting this further away, but then it'll give me something to grind on the edge here. So what I'll likely do is move this window back a little bit, not a lot because I don't think that it should go back a lot. I don't want the lines to start looking weird uh, because it's you know jammed up against this. We don't want that, but just kind of splitting the difference and trying to uh, you know do whatever slight modifications we can you know, even if it's multiple slight modifications to allow this thing to fit nice and even. Another thing I can do is I can actually massage the sheet metal up a little bit in these areas. It's it's not gonna make, you know, um, a bunch of a difference to to maybe stretch a little bit and allow this sheet metal just to, to crown up a little bit underneath here. I think um, it uh, is another thing that we could do to try and help us get a little bit from grinding it and a little bit from crowning the sheet metal there. Um, anyway, that's what I'm gonna work on next. So um, this pattern, although I made it so that I could tape it onto the cowl right now, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna save the pattern, but uh, I will give myself some reference points as to where it fits right now so that we can see our progress as we grind a little, move a little shimmy, try and fit this window perfect. But man, what a beautiful window. Like, look at it on that car. I don't know if you guys are into it. There's a couple different styles of uh, aftermarket windows. There's another one called a Halleck, and, uh, and those are incredibly beautiful as well. But, um, but yeah, just really digging the look of it on this Roadster, especially once we get that split in there. All right, this might be tough for you guys to see, but as I'm looking down this cowl, I'm noticing that there is a bit of a sharp radius here, which is at the edge where we're touching hard on that window. And then it's kind of a bit flat here. So I think that what I'm gonna do before I do any grinding on the window is I'm going to do my best to just kind of develop this area a little bit. I might um, tap in on the highs here and try and tap up 
where I think it needs to be moved over to. So maybe we can get some of this metal that's touching hard to move into this area where we're not touching at all. I think, you know, this is, uh, this is the thing that window is matched to a Brookville cowl. So this is like the highest quality kind of aftermarket cowl. Um, I'm not sure what this cowl is. This is an aftermarket cowl as well, but it's older. Like it, it's, you know, a couple of restorations ago. So who knows as to how this is put in or, or, or how that stamping really is oriented in this spot. It does seem like there's too much crown here versus how shallow it is in this area. So I am going to hammer on this a bit and push that up, like try and massage it a little bit. I'll do the same on the other side. Um, I might make a little bit of a template and see that we're similar um, in shape to both sides, but um, we're, gonna, we're gonna start with that anyway. Okay, so now that I've got a bit of a template of the shape that it is, now we can kind of monitor um, how it's going as I'm trying to build it up a little bit. So I'm trying to push some of this shape into this area. So I've got my uh, homemade leaf spring slapper that I'm gonna hit on this area, try and spread the load. That's why it's nice and flat. We can kind of spread the load. I'm not putting any harsh dents into it. And I've just got this, uh, this old, this is actually my favorite dolly now. I just picked it up um, at one of the swap meets last fall. But I'm gonna push up on this area to try and bring some of that up where I've marked here and here. This is where we've got the most gap between that windshield frame and this, which is also where it seems the flattest and it seems the most sharp where it's touching that windshield frame. So I definitely think that this has to get moved a bit. See, I've got my knee bracing underneath the dolly a little bit. You can see the flex in there. That's where I'm pushing up. That's where I want to get some more shape into. And we're just gonna work this area. I'm kind of pushing right under here now. Now I don't want to go too far without checking to see what we've done. I definitely felt that move. Um, let's just see what our template says here. So now we are rocking a little bit, like we've we've brought a little bit up into here. Really isn't uh, isn't showing a lot, but what it could also be showing is that it's brought this whole thing up. So maybe we're not being. Um, we're not showing total progress here because it doesn't stop at the edge of our panel, but um, but definitely we've come away a little bit in that spot Which is what we want. We'll probably do a little bit more
All right, so things are looking a little bit better around here now that we've ground away and shaped our lower windshield kind of area here. Now, something else I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, make a pattern of this corner and just kind of flip it to the other side to make sure that we're in the realm of uh, similar to both sides, just to make sure. It's always good to make patterns and to double check your work. This will keep you from chasing, you know, um, an indiscrepancy from side to side. So I'm gonna do that just with some tape. I'll probably lay some tape on there. But uh, we are getting close then. <clears throat> I think now, like I really don't want to move this windshield back because I just love how even it is right around this section. And, uh, and if we were to move it back any further, see we've already moved it back a little bit. See the first line was when we just tried to shape the cowl. And the second line is when we decided to, uh, to grind a little bit here. So we're incrementally moving back and I think it's in kind of the optimal position right now as far as um, where it looks really good. So having said that, we are close. I am going to shift my focus to massaging the cowl a little bit more, like it really needs maybe an eighth of an inch on this side. And, uh, and that could also come from, you know, just pressing down a little bit in the center, like, like to get these tiny little tweaks, you kind of got to think about it. Um, like if you were to bring this down, even just like a 16th of an inch, like it ramps up like that, um, you know, it would pop, you would be able to take some of that material and, and kind of shift it over here a little, not saying that that's what it needs or that's what we're going to do, but we are gonna try and stretch this area, maybe with the planishing hammer a little bit. I'll take the radius gauge, I'll check what we've got going on here and, um, and see if we can just develop this area a little bit with the planishing hammer and, um, and kind of go from there. Like, you know what I mean though, if I, if I press down just a touch on that, it, it does move the materials. So um, whether or not we can get any out of that, which we might be able to, but anyway, that's the thought process between the steps I'm taking, having never done this before, I'm just kind of going incrementally, step at a time, checking my work as best I can with patterns, etc. Hopefully that helps you out if you're deciding to do a windshield like this, or maybe you get an idea on how you could make this windshield without having to buy one. These are not cheap. You could also kind of make this style windshield. Um, anyway, let's keep going. Look who's here! Elio's come to play today. <laughs> What's up? What is up, buddy? How's it going? Not bad, not bad. Excellent. So, good. yeah, working on the windshield here. Um, I just set it back on after grinding a little bit more. I see there's like a tiny bit closer profile I could grind on this side, on the back side. 
like it's fitting really close except we're hitting right kind of in there first and still have a bit of a gap so i've got a little bit more to tune up there um, but also i want to develop the uh, um, this area on the other side a little bit to get the rest of that gap the area here is still a little bit down so i think what i can do is uh same as the other side stretch the area a little bit bring it up and the reason why i think i can do that is because if you look at the cowl how it kind of it kind of actually like humps out and comes in like this so as it transitions from humping out and coming in like this when it comes up like that i think that's where we're missing a little bit of crown here is that now it's sloping you know quite um like reversed a little bit in that area where it's coming from something that's already humped out so we just need to hump this up a little bit more by adding a bit of surface area by stretching in there it'll fit really nice so what i'm going to do is we're going to pull this off one more time uh we'll grind that area that needs it and then i'll get elio to template like i was saying before he can template both these corners and well actually pardon me he's going to template one corner with some tape flip it over to make sure that we're matched on both pillars all good all good sweet and then <clears throat> uh yeah we'll planish a little bit more try and get it fitting perfect Okay, so Ellen's made this template. You saw he did that, pretty cool. Just did it with tape, put it onto a piece of card. Now we've got a nice template. Mostly we're doing this to see and make sure that this tip is the same length on, on both of them, right? Like the rest of this is stuff that we can't really change, but because we've been working on this tip, that's, I would hate to see that this was half an inch too short or, or, or a quarter inch too long or something like that. So that's what the template's for. We can flip it over to the other side and see that they're already this, the same length on both sides. So that's good. We don't have to worry about that. It's already pretty dang good. So the next step, like I said, is we're going to pull this off, do a tiny bit more touch up grinding and then, uh, and then planish and try and fit these areas a little bit better. And then we'll go back to our first template and drill all the holes for this and bolt it on.
Okay, so right now, we've got it fit up again. We're a little bit better by grinding this a little bit. There's still a tiny bit that could go in here. Elio's just got a bit of force down on it, flexing, flexing it right now because it wants to spring up, but there's a little bit that needs to be happening there, and then there's just a little bit that could happen right in here. So I've marked it at kind of the center of the gap. I'll do the same for that side. And then uh, I'm just gonna go ahead with the planishing hammer again and just kind of ease a little bit more shape into this, stretching it a little bit. And that is just kind of bringing the material up in this area to kind of <clears throat> continue this type shape, if that makes any sense. So a little bit more and we're almost there. All right, so right now I've just got this marked with a G. We've got a little bit of a gap still right here and we're touching hard here, but it's lifting off a little bit at the edge. So I think this is still a bit harsh of a radius because we're lifting off here now. Um, whatever I've done has kind of just messed that up a bit. So I'm gonna hammer down where it's T for touching there and I'm pushing up with my knee and the dolly underneath in this spot. That's how we're gonna try and push down this high and pick up this low. Windshield back on, see how we did. Well, that pretty much took care of it, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got less than a 16th. How are you on your side? Pretty good. Less than a 16th? Uh, maybe a 16th, yeah. Okay, we're gonna have a look at Elio's side, but for the most part, I think this, well, let's clamp it to be sure here. Let's not guess. I think, centered? I feel like it was further back than that. Like we gotta back it up a bit, yeah. Yeah, let it let it back up from our mark if if it fits better, you know. Yeah, like that's pretty much where the marks are. This. You're right on your mark, like the tip of the mark. Or are you back from it? I'm back a bit. You're back about the same as the tip. Uh, not oh. as much, no. Okay, good. That's same where I'm at. All right, so we are so close with this window now. It is like, it is, we're splitting hair. So basically what we're gonna do now is we are gonna put our template back on 
Do you remember this template that we started with? Got the tape all over it still. We're gonna tape this to the bottom of the windshield. We'll place it on, we'll center it, and then we'll tape it to this and lift the windshield off. That's kind of the trickiness of this template. It's got all of our centers for our bolt holes already marked on it. So um, basically, well, this is also part of the same video. You guys just saw this, so what am I doing explaining? Let's just do it. <laughs> We are using red Loctite for these bolts because uh, we do not want them ever to come out. Also you want these to lock right in because we, they come with nylock um, hardware here so it's going to be, it's going to have resistance coming off too when you take it off so you definitely want the stud to be locked in tighter than a nylock nut for friction. Something else that we're noticing is how much of an angle these um, cowl studs are on. Like they're kind of sticking directly into the sheet metal after it's already done a bit of a bend. So as we place this windshield onto the cowl, I think we might have to slot the holes for this hardware because it's on a little bit of an angle, but we'll give it a shot, see if we can wiggle it on. If not, that's what we're gonna have to do. Well, <laughs> Elio was like, why even try? We know it's not gonna fit. So he took out one of the studs so that we can just try it on. Oh, like yeah, this. no, it's not even. We can't do that either. No. Okay, so we gotta pull these studs out.
All right, look at that. It's on there. There's no more Sharpie to look at. You can kind of get the full meal deal. How does it look? Do you guys like it? Let me know in the comments if you guys think this is a cool windshield. Um, like I said, the Halleck windshields, I also really like. Um, obviously, like stock Roadster stuff has its place, but just the, the shape of this thing and how it flows with the cowl, I think it really fits this car as well as our plans for the grill, which will be the next video on the Model A. So stay tuned for that. Thank you all for watching me custom, everybody. Really appreciate you guys. Really appreciate everything you guys say in the comments, the discussions that we have, Elio for filming and helping out today. That was awesome. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. So don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. And if you wanna be part of the custom crew, five bucks a month, the little button at the end of this video, you'll see it pop up any minute. That gets you a badge by your name, easier for me to answer you in the comments, as well as 15% off the merch store. Um, I also want, you guys know that uh, coming up, there's gonna be a bunch of more promo codes I'll drop in the next video or two. There's a couple companies that are making promo codes just for you subscribers. So uh, I'm excited to show you guys that. Take it easy, everybody. Have a good week.